top has sprung a leak And the animals are trapped Have all become my pets And I'm living off the grass And the drippings from the ceiling It's okay to eat fish Cause they any feeling Something in the way mm -hmm. Something in the way Yeah Something Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Something in the Way by Nirvana. All-time classic acoustic tune, this one. Great version on the MTV Unplugged as well. It can be played super simple. In fact, the way Kurt played it on the original recording is easier than what I just did in the intro there. I added in a way of kind of accenting the bass line a little bit, which I think sounds great if you're playing it on your own. It makes it sound to me more like the whole recording. You don't have to do it, though. It can be really super easy. I guess for most people, the trickiest part is getting the tuning right. It's in drop D tuning, but everything tuned down a tone. So the tuning notes you're after here are going to be a C, G, C, F, A, and D. So it is just like regular tuning, but with a low your thicker string tuned down the same as the fourth string. This is a pretty common kind of tuning. Nirvana, Elliot Smith uses it a lot as well. So uh, nothing to worry about when you're tuning down like that in case you're not used to tuning your guitar down. Nothing's going to happen. The, the the very worst thing that could happen was that the, the neck moves ever so slightly back a bit, which will make the strings closer to the fret. So if you've got a very, very low action, you might find the strings get a little bit rattly, but it's perfectly solved by just tuning back up to regular tuning. So don't be been at all worried about doing that of course you can play it as well by staying in standard tuning and just playing drop d okay so just keeping your tuning as normal just moving the thicker string down one tone the fingering would stay the same it will just be a little bit higher he's singing it pretty low so that maybe that might suit you better to do that anyway so maybe explore staying in standard tuning if you're a bit scared of the uh, detuning your guitar a whole heap let's get to a close-up check it out So here's what's played on the record for the verses. Um, Kurt very obviously uses his like third finger there, backed up a little bit by the second finger. You can see it on the MTV uh, video. You're just playing the thickest three strings there at the fourth fret. You don't want the other strings ringing out. So part of the trick there is just kind of bending it up at that knuckle there so that uh, you've got those three strings and then the other ones are muted, okay? But try and feel like it's a bit of a, a grippy thing there with the rest of your fingers. Keep everything else dead, okay? So that's the first chord. And the second chord, now officially it's this. I think Kurt plays it with his first and second fingers, like a D chord, but uh, not playing the thinnest string at all, just using first and second finger. That's what Kurt does. I generally just play without plucking, playing the thinnest three strings in the verses at all. So I'm just looking for the thickest three strings there. Now my fingers may be going there, but whatever, I'm just muting the thinnest strings and after those thickest three open strings. So that's the verses, are, that's that's it. In fact, you can kind of play the whole song like that if you want, right? So, underneath the bridge, the sharpest from
An interesting thing about this song is that the strumming pattern is super consistent all of the way through the verses. It does make it a little tricky to sing. The key here again is just like practicing until it's automated and then really relaxing into it because the song itself has got to be like super chilled. You have to feel really relaxed. You get to that point of relaxed uh, performance by practicing it and repeating it over and over until it becomes like so easy that you don't have to think about it. That strumming pattern is down, 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 up, down, down, down. So the fourth fret, down, down, up, open, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down. Now I'm feeling it as being one, two, and a three. Now that count, I've, I feel like that puts me in that zone best because it feels so slow. If you struggle with that, you might try counting it one, two, three, four, and 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 down, 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 up, down, down, down. Now remember the hand should be still moving consistently. You can see Kurt doing that as well. So it's down down there's a down that's missed down 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 up down miss down down up down miss down down up down miss down and then it's about getting into this like zone where it feels like it's almost falling off it's actually pretty hard to play that slow you can see in the unplugged version, Kurt actually asked Dave Grohl to, to play time to help him stay at a kind of steady rhythm because otherwise it gets, for most people, it's, it can get a little bit wobbly. On the MTV unplugged version, he's also playing like... He's playing notes individually. I don't feel like there's... Or I don't remember now if there's a specific pattern to it. I don't think there is from memory. You pro especially if you're new to this thing, you definitely want to be just strumming, doing the down, 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 down. But if you're feeling more adventurous, or you want to, you like the unplugged version. You can start picking out the notes individually, making sure you stay in time. Now, if you want to keep it super simple, you can keep with those same chords for the verses, because that's actually what's going on. Something in the way. Something in the way. Yeah. Probably you want to pick the strumming up. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. really matter especially if you're doing a cover of it remember that, that you don't have to stick with exactly the same strumming patterns that were on the records it just wants to have something a little bit different there between the verses and the choruses otherwise if you're playing the same chords with the same rhythm all of the way through the song it's definitely going to get a little bit boring so you want to have something real super simple for the verses and then building it up a little bit and strumming more for the choruses now one thing that I feel like builds the song even better is to use some bigger chords for the chorus rather than just sticking with those little power chords, which is, I'm fairly sure, what Kurt is playing on the record, on the, at least on the M MTV Unplugged one. You can see him still doing this and then going to the D. That's what he's doing, but he's strumming it up more. So. You see that's what's going on however there's also a really nice bass line that i feel like brings it up where you hear this something in the way and if you want to pick that out a nice way of doing that is to use this extended chord where instead of just playing the fourth fret the thickest three strings you use your first finger for that third finger is going down in the sixth fret on the third string and little finger the seventh fret of the second string we're not playing the thinnest string now it does it's a little bit trickier this isn't you know definitely not as easy as the other one we start with that then we move first finger down to the fourth string 
and we're going to play that open fifth string. We're going to target that. So something in the way. And then we've gone, this is just the D chord. You can do it that way if you want, whatever. And then the next one, we're targeting this fifth string again. So something in the way. Keeping the strumming super simple here So you can see and hear that bass movement and You don't have to do it. Like, like I said, you can stick with those simpler chords just like Kurt was. It's totally cool. But I just feel like having this thing going really dirty and like really sad and you're just feeling miserable and slow like you're just hanging on and it's that's the got the feeling and then it slightly more uplifting that it's it's a dark song but that i think what i what i love about it i think what we all love about it is that kind of menacing slow hopelessness of that because it feels like it feels so just dark and hopeless kind of and then something in the way there's something about that melody and the way it kind of lifts it 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 does feel kind of slightly more positive so i feel like it makes sense to it brings it up you know Nice little gap. And then we're back into that second verse. And it literally does verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and finishes. So it's a relatively simple one. You can get into the minute eye of it and really start to think about like picking the notes individually. But the most important thing that you can do to make this song sound good if you want to play it for somebody else in a campfire vibe is to have a separate verse and chorus and not just play it the same way. Because if you play it the same way, it just gets a bit boring. It's easier but at least to change up the strumming and keep the strumming super simple for the verses or maybe pick out the notes individually and then strum it for, for the choruses, but have something different going on between those two sections uh, and hopefully it'll sound great and you'll really enjoy it. Loads more Nirvana songs over on the website, so do go and check that out. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.